Spirit, have your way here. You see every heart, every need, Lord Jesus, every heart cry, Father, every unanswered prayer, Father. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you are able to do the suddenlies. I thank you for a, a word from heaven today for each and every one that would come and fill every crevice, Lord, every place, Lord Jesus. We need you, Lord. How many here, you just need the Lord's strength. You need his strength. Hallelujah. We, we ask you, Lord, your strength is made perfect in our weakness, Lord Jesus. We thank you that we could be here. We thank you for the glorious sunshine. We thank you for the rain this week. What a blessing, Lord. Thank you for the picture, Lord, that you said you would be like rain that falls on newly mowed grass, Lord, bringing refreshing, Father. Everywhere you go, your anointing that breaks yokes and brings refreshing and meets our needs and fills us up with your strength and with your joy and all that you are, Lord. Just bring a revelation to the fullness that we have in you today. Help us truly be able to drink of it, to taste it, to see it, to be a reality in our hearts and lives, Lord. We just lift up those who are not here, Father, whether they're on shift work or whatever, Lord, um, these personal care workers, Father God, that are just on the front lines. We thank you for them. We thank you for every individual. We ask, oh God, that we could come to your throne of grace with faith this morning that there is no fear, Lord Jesus, for your perfect love casts out all fear. We thank you. We just take authority over fear right now in the name of Jesus. We, we just, uh, in our own lives, but Lord God, in this country, in Jesus' name, we pray there would be a separate even as you said, let there be light as we sang about light this morning, Lord. We speak, let there be light to every shadow and every lie, everything that's not real, Father God, that's fear induced. We just take authority over it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that our bodies, we can lift our bodies to you as a living sacrifice, which is our spiritual worship as we have this morning, Lord quicken our bodies. Thank you. You give us everything, everything pertaining to life and godliness. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and minister that, all these things to your people, to us, Lord, this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. The Lord would say to you, he, he has, he's aware and he, he knows the needs that you have, that which you are are hoping for and desiring and just will allow him by your spirit let the anointing come in and just minister to those places of your heart and of your mind and of your thoughts and of your emotions and Lord we just surrender it I was seeing in the spirit as we were singing not just casting our crowns before the Lord but also casting our cares upon the Lord for he cares so uh, just casting our crowns, yes, those things that God has enabled us to do for his glory. He deserves the glory. But we're also invited this morning to come and cast our cares upon him, for he cares. So, Lord, we thank you that every single care, every single need today, we declare that it is met today. All of our needs are met today. You're our shepherd. We lack no good thing. You withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly. We thank you we're upright because of what Jesus has done for us. We also cast down idols, Father, those things that have replaced our, our time of incense and ministering to you. And we just cast those, Lord God, to say they are worthless. They have amounted to nothing. They'll never amount to anything. And they can't satisfy. They leave us less uh, fulfilled. So, Father, we just pray that you come and fill those places, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every thirsty heart. And, Father, I thank you for your word today. You're going to speak to people's hunger in their spirit, Lord God. We thank you. We're not going to go away. 
hungry or dissatisfied but filled with you satisfied completely full of faith you you are God of the now you are God of our past you are God of the present and God of the future Lord you know the harvest of this this geographical area Lord as well as Ontario as well as Canada we just stand in agreement we thank you you've given us authority to be possessors and we possess in agreement father with all the churches and all your people everywhere that are declaring decreeing your kingdom to come and your will to be done and the government to be upon your shoulders Lord it is on your shoulders Lord Jesus I thank you that even though the nations might rage and plot in vain against the Lord and his anointed his church Lord that you sit in the heavens and laugh and you can turn all things for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to your purpose that's us Lord we stand in agreement we declare you shall have dominion from sea to shining sea See, you shall have dominion over every area in our hearts, in our lives, in our bodies, our health, regarding every area of our life. We declare your Lordship in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. That's incense before the Lord. If you are wondering what's your incense, it's your praise and your worship. But also, he loves when we bring our requests to him. Amen. And we don't have to get all religious about it. We can just say, Lord, I'm as tired as ever. I need your strength. <laughs> we can do that. One line in that song I didn't agree with, he, he alone uh, isn't up there. We are seated with him in heavenly places. And I, I don't know, I thought, okay, what's, what's not agreeing in here? And it was like, oh yeah, no, 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 he's not alone. Uh, we're all there with him. Can't you just see it? And can't you just see all the angels of the Lord blessing and praising him? He's not alone at all. He's filled. Glory to God. Amen. We can smile now. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Sometimes I just like to just look around and enjoy the moment that we are so blessed. We have no idea what is ahead of us. Um, there might be hard times. Amen. There might be hard times. We don't know on god's clock what time it is exactly but we can have uh, the assurance that he's in control and we can stay in tune to his spirit and we have ears to hear what his spirit is saying to the churches so i feel like um god has been starting a new series as we've been blessed to be able to come back together to learn how to be possessors uh, how to be soldiers, how to actually be possessors. And um, we're just going to take it kind of slow. At first I was, I was uh, asking the Lord, I was seeing many truths here, and I got basically the ABCs of being a possessor. And it, it, it brought me, slowed my, me down as I, as I got studying about the anointing. We are anointed to possess. That's the message today, anointed to possess. So what is the anointing? It's important if we know we're anointed to possess, it's important for us to know what that is. And Paul, the Apostle Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened to see the hope to which he's called you. Your calling, your talents, your gifts of the Holy Spirit are unique and different. If every single one of us is, we have a different anointing, we have a different flavor, we have a different fragrance, we are different people from different backgrounds, and God uh, takes who he's created us to be and and a, our abilities and gifts uh, as the word of God says we all have received gifts of the Holy Spirit different gifts but of the self same spirit so the Holy Spirit is the one who gives these gifts he gives gifts severally as he wills so I believe that all my heart, that even before the foundations of the world, the Bible says we were. We, we were uh, designed by God, put on the planet Earth for such a time as this, and to do a specific job. And how important is it that for us to recognize? Um, not only talents, it's not only for ministry, it's not only for spiritual gifts, it's also about natural abilities. God has given many gifts, and I feel like we need, uh, first of all, to have an appreciation. Before we can be possessors, we have to have an appreciation for the different gifts that God has given us. 
uh, I don't know about you, but I realize so much how important some of these techie people are because I don't have this much techie desire or ability. There are certain things that other people do and I, I wouldn't pick to do Doug's job for anything. You'd be very thankful that, that God didn't make us trade jobs. You wouldn't want Doug up here and I wouldn't want to do what he does uh, with all his numbers and everything. So we see all these varying different gifts of this, but it all comes from the self-same spirit. And we need to have an appreciation of that, and we need to have an awareness and recognize what is on our life, and then how do we submit and how do we work with that specific anointing. So it takes me way back. I always like to start at the beginning. That's how the Holy Spirit works. And we see in the book of Exodus uh, that uh, Exodus uh, that um, part of the plan, God's plan, was to anoint the priests. And it was done. The symbol of the Holy Spirit was the oil, anointing oil. So in Exodus uh, chapter 30, 22, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Moses, take the following fine spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much of that of fragrant cinnamon, 250 shekels of fragrant calamus, 500 shekels of cassia, all according to the sanctuary shekel, and a hin of oil, and make these into a sacred anointing oil, a fragrant blend, the work of a perfumer, and it will be the sacred anointing oil, then use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the ark of the covenant of the law, the table and all the articles, the lampstand and its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering, and all its utensils utensils and the basin and the stand and you shall consecrate them so they will be most holy and whatever touches them will be holy. Anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them so they may serve me as priests and say to all the Israelites this is to be my sacred anointing oil for generations to come. Do not pour it on anyone else's body and do not make any other oil using the same formula. It is sacred, and you are to consider it sacred. Whoever makes this perfume like it and puts it on any other, then a priest must be cut off from their people. So there was a specific anointing oil with specific spices they were to take. And first of all, the very first uh, verse that I read you, it says, the Lord said to Moses, take the following fine spices. Take those quality spices. Uh, we've been getting into uh, some of the essential oils and the, there's different qualities. I was, uh, uh, yeah, not quite aware of that. So there's certain ones you don't want to ingest and, and certain things you got to do with certain oils and that kind of thing. Um, but this was God's sign and the symbol to take the fine, to take the quality spices. There are, so there's different quality of spices of these oils. They are crushed and, and they are the work of the perfumer and we need to know that the Holy Spirit is the perfumer. Amen. And he takes these fine spices and he crushes them and he makes these costly oils. So we need to have this uh, appreciation again for the cost of the anointing, the price of anointing. Take the finest, take the best. We need to bring our best before the Lord and let the Lord do the rest. Amen. Give him our best as Lisa gave her, her all this morning. We give our best and then Holy Spirit does the rest. There is an unction, there is a power, there is an ability that is supernatural that comes and anoints us to do what we need to do. Each and every one of us has a special anointing, a special blend, a special blend of circumstances, a special blend of, of all the circumstances in your life and all the background and everything put together is very uniquely you. And even through the crushing and the working of the perfumer as the Holy Spirit makes up this oil that's unique to you, God is preparing you for this weight of glory, for this anointing, for this very purpose. 
I look back at my life, maybe you can look back at your life and say, some of those painful circumstances brought you into the presence of the Lord, brought you into the place of learning how to pray, of learning how to do warfare. And so there's all these different anointings, every single one of us. Some has, out of learning and growing and struggling through certain things has caused us to be able to teach others, to have a passion. Uh, maybe we broke through some hereditary stuff and, and now God is an, using those circumstances to anoint us to teach others, to, to grow others. And so it's important for us to find that unique blend and, and be aware of what the Holy Spirit, the perfumer, is working that special work out in you. And in that way, we can, like the scripture we started with last week, we can count it all joy when we go through these trials, these crushings, these preparings, because God is preparing a weight of glory, an anointing. He wants to use these things in your life so that you can encourage other young women, so you can encourage other young men. So maybe you've gone through circumstances and you say, whatever you do, young man, you think of Proverbs, all the Proverbs that Solomon speaks about. Um, he learned some of these things the hard way. Not to turn to all, to loving other women and get distracted by that. He had so much to say about wisdom, about what's important and priorities. And God used what he went through... And maybe God's using some of you through sports and the discipline of that or the things that you face in the world today. And God has an anointing on you and he doesn't want you just to get the information. He, he wants, what should I do with this, Lord? Amen. What should I do? What should I do with this, these circumstances? Some are given a bunch of lemons and they learn how to make lemonade. Amen. Hear about the little boy in the farm and he's digging through and somebody, the farmer says, what are you doing with all that manure? And he says, well, I figure with all this, there's got to be a horse in here somewhere. All right, there's got to be a horse in here somewhere. So maybe you're, you're, that's what you're feeling like you're doing. But don't let the enemy have the last word. Allow this to be an anointing to bless others and to say, I will conquer this. And we're going to be looking a little later into all the uh, David and his fighting men. How did they learn to do this? Well, I believe first and foremost, we can't get past the fact that God anointed them to be soldiers, to give David their support. So then as one, they could move like a powerful army. And I believe God has an anointing on every single one of you here this morning for to do a specific task. Some it's worship. And God gave that talent and that desire ever since they were a little kid. I used to ask uh, little ones, if you could play any instrument up at the front when you're big, what do you want to play? And usually they answer just like that. I want to drum. Or I want to, I want to do like Chris. I want to play the guitar. Or I want to sing. And, and it's just in there. They already know who they are. And it's very important for us, again, to develop that uh, because God's anointed, anointed them, given them that divine ability, that unction. So we could say it's an unction, it's an ability, it's a grace given by God on the, on the abilities and our circumstances, our life, our experience. There's an unction to function in that role that God has called you to function. And in, that, in our body, just even as Lisa said, if you're not already wearing a hat, whoever has uh, that ability... Ability to help with uh, with uh, with the techie stuff back there. Everybody, take a look there. There's 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 a special little booth there for for these techie people. A church can't really be very good. <laughs> Our, we remember we started out when we started out. Everything was rough. And, and we're getting better at it. So again, God gives us abilities, but we have to, uh, we have to give them to the Lord. We have to be willing to be used by the Lord. For from you and to you and through you will be all things. When we've given the Lord our lives, he allows that 
uh, that pro process in our in our lives to bring about that perfuming oil, that sacred oil, and it's our best. Bring before me those fine spices. Bring to me your best. Bring to me. And so you say to the Lord, I remember saying, Lord, I didn't feel like I had a whole lot of abilities, a whole lot of talents, but I remember just laying my life on the line and saying, if you can use this, this for whatever you want to use this I'm willing here I am send me that doesn't fall on deaf ears I would have never thought it would ever lead to this and yeah there was a crushing and there was a laying down of my life and there was a bringing my best and there was a crying out to the Lord but if the Lord didn't anoint me to do this Lord help all of you and Lord help me <laughs> Lord, help us if we're anointed. So God gives a supernatural to the natural. He can take something small, and he can take something that people won't even take a second look at. They wouldn't even take a second look at David. They didn't even take a second look. They didn't even bother calling him in from the fields. This little runt of a teenager. And he didn't think he was, he was, he was the one stuck with taking care of the sheep. But while he was there, he was given his best. Nobody else was listening to his beautiful songs but the sheep. And the Lord and all of heaven. Amen. Not a second look. What is this? We don't even have it. And he was strumming in, worshiping the Lord. The Lord, you are my shepherd. I lack no good thing. You make me lie down in green pastures and quiet waters. You restore my soul. He was a worshiper. And God, the word says, God looks at the heart. So when Samuel came to anoint somebody, go and anoint another king. In walks the big brother, stately and handsome and tall and dark and muscular, and he walks in and the prophet says, surely this is the Lord's anointed. Even the prophet thought, for sure this is the one. He's getting ready to anoint him. And, and the, the Lord says, don't put my anointing, don't put my oil on him, for he's not the one. Oh, he's kind of pulls his hand back takes a step back and the next brother and the next brother and Sam is going it's not it's not is there another brother somewhere is it's not the anointing I, I'm not getting the release to pass that anointing you say oh yeah there's a little rent David he's in the field we didn't bother calling the man but go and get him everything stops and waits and here comes this ruddy little teenager comes yep dad you called and as soon as he comes forward, Samuel says, this is the one. Anoint him. But he was given his best when nobody was listening and no one was looking. God says, I don't look on the external. I'm not impressed with, uh, with what other people are impressed with. I am one who looks at the heart. And God knew before the foundations of the world, he knew your heart. Maybe you feel I don't have much to give God. Maybe I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what I'm good at. God just says, give me what you got. What about the woman who had a little bit of oil? All I have is a little bit of oil, enough to make one cake for me and my son. It's like, make it for me, says the prophet, and give it to me. And she does. She, she takes what she has, that last little bit. And we all know the end of the story she was provided for. God is asking, what do you got? Give me that, that little bit of meal. Give me that little bit of word. Give me that, give me that with, a, with the anointing. Here, let me mix it up. Because I can see what you can't see. I can see what other people can't see. I can see into the heart. And I'm working something. I'm working something on the inside of you. I'm not done yet. It's not over till it's over. Amen. And the Lord is, he's wanting us to rise up to be possessors. It won't happen until we bring him our best, until we're willing to use what we've already got. Whether no one's hearing, no one's listening, no one's paying attention. It's, it's what's coming out of our heart. 
before the Lord. So then the Lord promotes him, and we've been looking at that a little bit last week. So the Lord takes him from being a worshiper to being a warrior. And while he's taking care of the sheep, he learns how to be a warrior because he's protecting the sheep and he's being faithful with that little bit that he's been given. So when a lion comes, a bear comes, he kills a lion and he kills a bear. Now he's being promoted. He's going up in rank. He's going from glory to glory. And, and, and now God's making him a warrior to be a possessor. See, God knew all the way along. But so then he gives him his best from a shepherd boy protecting the sheep to becoming a warrior. Now he's a warrior and he's faithful with that. He gives him his best. And now the Lord anoints him as king. So how do we learn to be possessors? We go up in rank. We're faithful. It's not until you bring him your best. It's not until you use him what you got. Amen. Watch what the Lord will do, even just a little bit. You start to give him, and you want to give him more. And you want to give him more. And then what's so beautiful here is that the Lord blends these beautiful anointings. He's going to take the anointing. When, when I met Doug and, and Grace, when we met, I was 24 years old. We just moved to Dorchester. And we soon uh, just kind of knew in the spirit, uh, we can't, it's not just about tea parties and being social and having our kids and enjoying meals together. We knew in our hearts God had given us, we started giving our, our best and just saying, let's fast and pray one day a week and start to believe God. We're, we believe we were just faithful with that. And we discovered the power of prayer and agreement and gave us our, we gave our best. Amen. Through all the baby raising years, uh, there was always somebody pregnant, someone nursing while we're, we're meeting. We still, it still flowed. You just give the Lord what you got. God just can do a lot with a little when you give him your best. And then he begins to blend the anointings together. Now look what the Lord has done. And I believe he's taking all of our spices and to say, we can make a difference. How many of you know when, when the woman anointed Jesus' feet, it says the fragrance filled, filled the house. It just filled the house. When all of us get together and raise our voices and praise him, there is a blend of fragrances that comes before the throne of God that is a beautiful incense. Day and night, night and day, let your incense arise. That's not only when we get together corporately, but when you get up in the morning, you begin to give the Lord your best. Amen. Not your lazy, hazy, drazy prayers, but give him your best. Get up, raise your hands, lift your holy hands to him with thanksgiving. Give him praise and give him glory and give him the honor and start thanking him for your daily needs. And watch what happens. The joy of the Lord starts to happen. The flow starts to happen. There's an anointing that comes on your quiet times. Then there's a desire to start and pray and pray with others. And there's a beautiful blend of fragrance that comes before the Lord and says, this is it. He's going, when I, I dwell within the praises of my people, and there's a fragrance that fills the house, let that anointing be upon us. And he's anointing us when we do that. He's anointing us for service. So that when you go from this place, no matter what field the Lord has caused you in, he causes you to be a light. Let that oil, let it put it in your lamp and let your light so shine. Don't hide it under a bushel, but let it shine. For some reason, I'm just thinking of the power of the anointing of a whistle. This isn't in my notes, but my dad, when he, he whistled all the time, and there was something about my dad coming home or coming up the lane with poop. about his whistle. He'd whistle and it would fill the house with joy. It would just do something in the spirit. A cheerful whistle. He wasn't expressive whatsoever. You kind of deadpan, melancholic kind of dad. You really had to work on getting a laugh out of him. That was my job, get my dad to laugh. But he had a whistle, and there was an anointing on him for that. That whistle, see, some people know how to whistle. I can't whistle for a squat. 
That's the best. That's my whistle. I can't whistle. But somebody else can do what I can't do, and it's going to release something that is specific for them. There's some people that sing in the spirit. And so the first thing the Lord called me to when I very first was born again was I loved to sing. I didn't have an incredible, powerful voice, but I started to take voice lessons. And I remember this one service. You maybe remember Doug and Grace. I was to sing after this girl who sang like Sandy Patty. And I went to the washroom. I think, oh, God. She's going to sing first, and then I'm going to have to come out and sing. Oh, I died a thousand deaths. I shut myself in the bathroom, and I go, okay, here goes nothing. I'm just going to do my best. Well, one person sang. She sang very beautifully, but the anointing hit me. The anointing hit me, and there were tears, and there was a response, and I was kind of shocked. And they just said, you know, when you sing from the heart... So whatever you do, I'll sing, whether it's whistle, sing, share the good news of Jesus Christ, share your testimony, play soccer, do whatever. Do it with all your heart because it's the anointing that makes the difference, that changes the atmosphere. Amen. The fragrance fills the house. Whether it be your whistle, your song, your intercession to say, let's pray. I knew this man when we first got born again and started going to Little Baptist Church here in Dorchester. And uh, there was a lot to be desired in the service. But this Mr. Creerar, I'll never forget as long as I live, they always ask, Mr. Creerar, would you open in prayer? And Mr. Creerar, who was built like a brick house, he would stand up and he would pray and the fragrance would fill the house. I go, what is that? Amen. The anointing will cause people to say, what is that? One of the first persons I led to the Lord, one of my neighbors here in Dorchester, she says, I've been watching you for years as you go with your five kids to the park every day with my buggy and my big laundry basket filled with food and everything else, and we go to the park every day. She says, I've been watching you for years. She says, what do you have? I've got to have what you have. That's what the world is longing for. It's like there's an anointing on being a mom. There's an anointing on being a good dad. What is it about that dad? What is it about that dad? All he's doing is playing in the backyard, but he's into it. His heart and his soul is into it. And that's the anointing. And the anointing will break yokes. The anointing will cause people to say, I got to have me some of that. There's an anointing of joy, so don't underestimate. Maybe you're thinking, so what do I have? Maybe my little gift is like, it's not much, but I'm giving my best to the Lord. What has he given me? Has he given me a, a talent to dance? Has he given me a talent to sing? Has he given me a talent to do books? I always like numbers, always like math. It's like, okay, go for it. Amen. Some people actually like doing math. My husband, he gets, works all day in the office, and then he comes home, and he's doing crazy kazuku and all kinds of stuff. It's more math. It's like, what? I say, you actually like doing that? So whatever God has given to you, it's an anointing. Amen. It's an anointing. Give it to Jesus and watch what he can do with it. He's going to take the natural and do something supernatural with it. He's going to cause you the ordinary to be the extraordinary. He's going to cause that which would be not noticed to be incredibly noticed and to do something very powerful with. So I just wanted to just share that, just the appreciation, first of all, for, the, for different people's anointing. And to say, that is awesome. That is Holy Ghost. We need to encourage people that when they pray or when they sing or when they play drums or whatever that is, it's like whatever that is, it's like keep doing it because it's doing something. 
Amen. It's doing something spiritual. It's doing something in your atmosphere. It's doing something in your neighborhoods. And you might be saying, you know what? I, I haven't led anybody to Jesus for a long time. But don't underestimate your witness as you go throughout your day. Don't underestimate that light that's shining. Don't underestimate how powerful that marriage at this stage is like. There's something on your marriage that other people can't help but notice. There's something on your prayer life and your agreement that people are going to notice. Watch. Discover the power of what that gift will do. Amen. So, and it will increase our authority. And this is the thing I wanted to share with you. I want to go to, is there is an authority? And I'm going to be aware of the children. I know they're being really good again. Incredible. So, Ezekiel 21, again, bringing us back to the testing, the crushing, the rejoicing, and all kinds of trials when we go through. In Ezekiel 21, 13, it says, Testing will surely come. And what if even the scepter, which the sword despises, does not continue, declares the sovereign Lord. Um, so we see here the anointing on David to be a worshiper. Then he was a warrior. And then he has the scepter. Then he be, has the authority. He's being given. He's anointed as king. A warrior king, a worshiper king. He still has the other anointings going, but now God anoints him with a scepter. And that's where what we were singing about this morning, he's not alone on the throne. We are seated with him in heavenly places. You might not know it, but you've been anointed as a prophet, priest, and king. In the spirit. I don't hear any amens because maybe you don't know that yet. But because you're in Jesus Christ, you are anointed as his prophet. You are anointed as his priest. We are all priests of the living God. Amen. So you have the anointed oil. What does a priest do? A priest ministers to the Lord. That's your ministering. That's your incense. Amen. A priest ministers to uh, the Lord. And then a priest in that anointing comes and ministers to people, lets their light shine in their varying different gifts and abilities. And then they move from the sword to the scepter, where we rule and reign. Did you know you will rule and reign with Christ? Amen. And even now, if you can see yourself by faith, when you're praying that you're literally coming, you're seated with him in heavenly places. So you are being given a scepter. Remember Esther, who came before the king, and she, she did her protocol. She took her time to know that she would have favor with the king, and she knew if he did not hand her the scepter and put the scepter out towards her, uh, she could lose her life. So she took a risk in the spirit. She took a risk, but you all remember that he, gave, he put out the scepter and, and said, what is it you want? I will give up to you up to half of the kingdom. Amen. We need to know that when we come boldly to his throne of grace, the Lord, because of the blood of Jesus, when you come with the blood of Jesus, that blood that speaks a better word than the blood of bulls and goats, you have been given a scepter to come. You've already been given the license to come boldly to that throne of grace. If you want to study that a little further in the book of Hebrews of who you are as, as a priest before the Lord and then that kingly anointing to come. See, that's going to make all the difference in all the world. Because in the spirit realm, the enemy also recognizes that authority. There is an anointing when you recognize your authority. My anointing doesn't stand on what I know or my experience or anything. My uh, power in the spirit is what God has already promised me. And then it's just coming boldly to receive that. It's as simple as my statement of faith. This church will be built debt free. I knew that in my heart, but it still took a lot of just, I'm saying it. I don't care, but I'm saying it. And praise God, there's that unity in our board. It's like, okay, pastor's saying it, and that's, let's believe God. 
And hasn't God been faithful? That's the anointing. There's an anointing on this church. And we will be building lots more churches. It's so exciting. Keep praying for our, I call them our churches in Africa, because they are. <laughs> they are our churches in Africa. What is God going to do? What can God do? If he can do by many or by few, obviously, it's not stopping what God is doing, what he has anointed this church to do. And that's why we're going to be looking at, in depth at the anointing that's on our lives. What can we do? What is it that we can do? What has God anointed us to do? What has God preordained and written in his book that Dorchester Christian Family Center is going to do? What has God preordained and written in his book concerning you? What is your part? What is it God could do with ordinary men and women once they're anointed by the Holy Spirit? Don't go anywhere, it says in the book of Acts, until you've been anointed and endued with power from on high. That's the anointing. Wait till the anointing comes on that which your gifts and your talents. Wait till that anointing comes upon you and you will be changed from one who hides and cowers in fear to those who fearlessly proclaim the good news of the gospel. Even when they're put in prison, they're, they're answering back. You judge for yourself whether we should obey God or obey man. But this is what we're doing. And I'm just here to tell you that I believe that, that we're going to need the anointing very much for the end times. To do the supernatural. We've been anointed. If you were to see and line up all the Christians in Canada, and if they would realize that they have been given the power and authority of the scepter, to take and enforce, enforce what God has already said, darkness would flee. We would take Canada back within a snap. It's to say, we're not standing for this. We'll do what we need to do and, and pray and agree. Had we not prayed and agreed and taken our authority in the spirit realm as pastors unified, uh, put out our signatures, etc., came together several times online to pray, to pray together for God to open those doors, we wouldn't all be sitting here. But we know what God said. Hallelujah. So we still stay in line with the Lord opening the doors. Let him open the doors. He opens doors that no man can shut. Amen. Peter and Silas, they didn't have to break down the doors. They, the doors were still locked when they went and checked. And they said, the guys that you're looking for, they're out in town square and they're preaching the good news again. Well, how is that possible? The guards are still outside the doors and the doors are still locked. How did they get out? Well, the Lord makes a way where there seems to be no way. And we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. But guess what? They're counterfeit. They're just standing there because we're not. So once we say, see, it gives me a, a power and authority because God has called me over this area. So I know without a shadow of a doubt, I'm not just talking to a little demon of infirmity in people. I'm talking to a principality. How could I dare do that? Because God's put me here and anointed me here so I have power and authority to do what God said. So when I got on my knees and God said, You're gonna, I'm going to use this place to change nations to influence nations. Guess what? Okay, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. What does that look like? What do I say? So in Jesus' name, you principalities and powers, even now, over Thames Center, over Dorchester, you got to leave in Jesus' name because we got possessors in the house. Amen? And I'm not standing alone. I'm coming in agreement. One of me can put 1,000 to flight, and two of me can put 10,000, three can put 100,000, seven can put a billion, I think. Something like that. <laughs> you do the math. Glory to God. Together. So this is what God wants us to get. Not because we're trying to pump ourselves up emotionally or whatever, get us all hyped up. It's like, no, that's what the word says. 
We have a scepter. We've been given the scepter and say, what you, whatever you ask, up to, ha up to half the kingdom. Jesus said to us, up till now, you haven't received anything. Ask. So your joy will be full. Jesus, I'm coming to your throne of grace. Read my lips. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for revival. I thank you this church is going to fill up. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name for every need met and every, every function fulfilled. I thank you for all the children that are going to be filling that children's wing. Might not look like a, a lot, but we're speaking it. We're doing it forth in faith. It's bought and paid for. That's how faith works. We know we have a sword, the sword of the spirit and the scepter which has come boldly to his throne of grace. Devil, read my lips. You can't steal my marriage. You can't steal my kids in the name of Jesus. You're not having this in the name of Jesus. And I'm not having this, so God, you arise in this situation. Enemies, be scattered. Hallelujah. That's how the anointing. God's anointed us. He's anointed your mouth. He's given you the sword. you got to say it. And I know not everybody's, you know, I recognize there's different temperaments. But have you ever had a very quiet person just speak with an authority? It doesn't have to be. It can be very much who you are. Very much who you are. My grandpa was, a, my opa was a man of very few words. He was an organist, he was a musician, he was quiet. You would uh, hardly, ten words would come out of his mouth in a whole morning working with him. But if anybody said anything negative, he goes, go, because he knew the power of words. So there is a, a place in even taking back our words. Amen. There's a place where it's like, Lord, I'm standing to your throne of grace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So what has God anointed you to do? Something powerful. Where has he allowed the crushing? Where are you bringing his best? What can you use? Amen. That very weapon that the enemy tried to destroy you and take you out. God's going to use you to anoint others. Maybe he's called you to intercede. Maybe you've had to fight for life and health and strength. God can anoint you, amen, to pray for others in a faith. And as you're praying for others, that anointing's flowing through you. Maybe the enemies attacked your marriage, and then they come around and you'll have a word for people. You've learned a wisdom. Amen. And just ask God, what can I do with that? Here it is, Lord, I bring it to you. Anointing. And let it fill the house. Let it change the atmosphere. So are you going to be uh, doers of the word this week? Take your scepter. Amen. And then do some enforcing in the spirit realm. Pray with me over Dorchester. I've had a few um, prophetic dreams, one early this morning of Val and I, and she was saying, look at all those new houses coming. She says, they're souls. That's where the harvest is. Like, it was kind of overwhelming. Like, how are we going to reach these people? And I look back at Dorchester. I think it's, it's quadrupled in size since we moved here. I have no idea what the Lord wants to do. And I thank the Lord for your faithfulness for even coming. Every person that's joined the troops, amen, uh, that we, t we, can, we can have great effect, change the atmosphere of the communities in which we live. And it's allow that fragrance to come out. Remember the woman who broke the alabaster box? Sometimes you just got to just break it. Give him your day. Give him everything. Give him your very best before the fragrance can fill the house. It's like it can't stay in your box. You've got to come out. Amen. You got to be bold. There's an anointing of boldness on his people. Paul prayed, pray for me. That the Holy Spirit would grant to me boldness, that I would fearlessly proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How can they believe if they've never heard? How can they hear if no one tells them? We've got to tell them. Amen? Will you make a point of just allowing that anointing? See, you might think, oh, wait, God, you need to give me more power. Just do what you, just open your mouth and just say, 
whatever. Just allow the Holy Spirit. He says, open wide your mouth and I'll fill it. Don't we have to do that sometime? Just strike up a conversation with people. So let's stand to our feet this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you're equipping, anointing us to be possessors. Anointing us to possess this land, Father, that you have given us. You've given us a place, Lord. You've given us a place to stand here, Father God. We thank you, Father, for what you are able to do by many or by few, Father. What you've done for us financially, I pray you would do for us numerically. You would grant us, Lord, boldness. That you would have us uh, open doors of opportunity and boldness, Father God. And favor, Father. We pray for favor to be upon this church, Father. We pray that people that otherwise have not been interested, Father, that there would be a fragrance that would exude from this place, Holy Spirit. We thank you for signs and wonders following us. Lord, for your word said, these signs will follow those who believe. I pray for healings right now in the name of Jesus over every person that needs a healing, Lord. I pray, Father God, for a miracle, for a breakthrough, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now grant us boldness, Father. To go out in power, to go out making a difference, Lord. Your anointing breaks yokes and it's what makes the difference. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. All God's saints said, Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So this last song is entitled, Yes, I Will. All right. So let's just sing this out to the Lord in boldness. Or wherever we are, whether it's with our neighbor, like Pastor Nita said, being a witness or sharing the gospel, that we just say, yes, I will, in Jesus' name. Amen? I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me. Your heart in the lowest valley. 